what are we going to do as we deal with trade issues about the uh, reauthorization of the Export-Import Bank, which expires at the end of June. So while I appreciate my colleagues on the Finance Committee in the movement of trade legislation, I've had many discussions with them over the last several months about this very issue and the fact that this issue has to get resolved. Now, I know that no member gets to have their way about what legislation gets an amendment. The list that was just given does nothing to guarantee that we would ever see a vote on the authorization of the Exim Bank. So while the other side wants to protect what they think are the opportunities to pass this legislation in the House, which I respect, I don't think that the House has to dictate to the U.S. Senate how we're going to proceed where the majority of people in both the House and Senate support the reauthorization of the Export-Import Bank. It right now has deals of $18 billion and more pending before it. If the bank expires June 30th, all of those trade deals, which are jobs for U.S. companies, disappear and go away. So my colleagues and I who support the XM Bank reauthorization, which is the majority in both the House and Senate, have lost their patience with the ability to get this bank before the Senate and before the House before that June 30th deadline. So I have no compulsion at this moment to say that I don't support moving forward on the cloture motion until we get an understanding of how this bank is going to be reauthorized. On the bank, telling my leadership the following. I've talked with you and talked with you and talked with you. I've foregone taking votes on the XM because I didn't want to rock the boat on the budget and other things. I am tired of talking. You're not going to get my vote for cloture or anything else this year until I get a vote, we get a vote on the XM Bank because there's over 60 votes in this body. If our bank expires, then the market share that we have today because we have competitive financing goes away and the biggest beneficiary of closing down the bank is China. I'm not going to subject American manufacturers to trying to sell their products overseas without XM financing when all their competitors have an XM bank. As a matter of fact, China's bank is bigger than the United States, France, England, and Germany combined. So all those who really do believe in trade, the fact that you would let the bank expire because some ideological jihad on our side that makes absolutely no sense to me, I'm not gonna be part of that anymore. To the people who are trying to make this the scalp for conservatism, I think you've lost your way. This bank makes money for the taxpayer. This bank doesn't lose money. This bank allows American manufacturers who are doing business in the developing world to have a competitive foothold against their competitors in China and throughout Europe who have access to XM financing. All we're talking about is an American-made product sold in the developing world where you can't get traditional financing. The XM Bank has been around for decades. Ronald Reagan was for the XM Bank. And the only reason we're having this debate is because some outside groups have made this the conservative cause celeb, in my view, without any rational reason.